XML files are a very common data format. Uh, a lot of programs, a lot of systems export data in the XML format rather than a CSV or a TSV file. That means that we need some kind of a strategy for reading those XML files into a host processing language and of course eventually into a database, particularly if we're building a data warehouse where we might want to consolidate data from multiple sources including XML files. Now there are a lot of different ways in which a program or a system that exports data could encode data in XML. One of the simplest ways is a simple two-dimensional structure where the data is exported in rows and columns. So in that case the XML file is in essence a slightly more sophisticated version of a CSV file. So let's go take a look at that first, how to read that into R and how to process that within R and how to eventually write that into a database. Let's look at the simplest way that we can load an XML document. Now, this strategy that we're going to take a look at with XML to data frame really only works for very shallow, very simple row column type uh, XML documents. So this is not a very generic and a very broad and very uh, all-encompassing way of reading XML, but it sometimes does the trick if you're getting XML documents that have the shallow structure because they represent data that was exported from a database. Here's an example of what such a row column do XML document might look like. So if you look at this carefully here, you have a document with the root tag or the root element document, and then underneath it, it has children of element type row, which underneath it contains girth, height, and volume as three child notes or three sub notes. Note a couple of things here. First of all, note it's always only two levels underneath the root. It's row, girth, height, volume, row, girth, height, volume, and so on. Also note that the child notes underneath row are always in the same order. It's girth, height, followed by volume. They're never in any other order. So this requires that it has that particular type of structure. Now, if it does have that structure and you use XML to data frame from the XML package and you pass it the XML file, it's going to manufacture a data frame for you with the names of the columns the same as the names of the tags. So girth, height, and volume would become three columns and each one of the child nodes underneath the root would become a row or an observation in that data frame. But to be very clear, this only works if you've got the two-dimensional shallow structure. If you don't have that structure, this is not going to work. This example shows that. So in this example, we have girth with the sibling node dim for dimension, and it has underneath it height and width. So now we have a three-level document. And note what happens when you read that with XML to data frame. It is going to concatenate the values in the child nodes underneath them, which is clearly not what you intend, would make it impossible to parse, would make it really impossible to use. So bottom line, XML to data frame only works on simple type of two-dimensional structures of XML documents. Here's a more complete explanation of the XML to data frame function. One thing that's notable is that by default, all values are read from the XML file and converted to strings. Um, unfortunately, when that happens and it gets read into the data frame, XML to data frame coerces the strings into uh, an appropriate data type automatically. So it tries to figure out if something is a number and makes it numeric. If something is text, it's gonna to try to make it text. And unfortunately, it's gonna to try to treat most text as factors. Unless you set strings as factors equal to false. Once you do that, then all the columns are no longer factors, they're now strings. And if you do want a particular column to be treated as a fact, you would have to explicitly convert it. Here's an example of what that would look like. So if you don't do anything and you use XML to data frame by itself, and you don't specify strings as factors equal to false, it defaults typically to true, which means it's gonna to try to convert every single one of your elements, assuming they cannot be converted to text or a date, 
it's going to try to convert it into a factor. And you can see that here uh, for the tree data, it's going to try to convert uh, the common name of the tree and the botanical name of the tree to factors because they're written as text. But if in a second example you specify strings as factors equal to false, it's going to try to turn all of the um, columns into an appropriate data type, which by default of course is character if it's text, if it's numeric it's a number. Notice by the way that price is one of the columns in that data set. And notice in this particular data set right here that price is actually dollar followed by a number. So it's actually not recognized by R as a number, it still treats it as text. And that is clearly something that you're going to have to convert manually. And here's how you do that. You read the data frame where strings as factors equal to false. So in that case, we don't have to worry about factors. If there is a particular column that you would like as a factor, for example, let's say for the sake of argument, you want the botanical column to be a factor, well, then you can convert it to a factor explicitly with as.factor. And if you have a column that either should be a number or can convert it to a number, you can do that. And in fact, price is such an example, but because it's got the dollar sign in front of it, we first have to strip that off with substring. And then once we have that text without the dollar sign in front as a prefix, we can then convert it to a number with as.numeric. So now we have the data frame in the form that we wanted. We have every column as characters. We have the ones like botanical as factors. And we have price as an example as a double, as a numeric. In the last couple of examples, we saw that the XML was loaded from a local file. You can also load XML files from a URL. In fact, it works for all the XML parsing functions, XML parse, XML tree parse, and of course, XML to data frame. And the way you do this is that you first retrieve the document from the URL with get URL. So you call it by passing a URL. It retrieves the entire XML file from that URL into, again, local internal text storage. And then from that point forward, it doesn't matter if it was read from a file or from a URL, you can call again as before XML to data frame. But one uh, notable um, element here, you need to call the rcurl library. You need to make sure that's included in addition to the XML library. Let's go and take a look and see what that looks like in code. So we're gonna look at each one of the examples in R itself. So here we're gonna load a simple uh, XML file. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. So here's the tree data.xml file, which contains simply a root node document with child nodes of tag type or tag name row, and underneath it in always that order, girth, height, and volume. So a simple 2D structure. So to load that, here's what we do. We, of course, load the library for XML. If it's not available, of course, you need to install it first. Let's set a path where we can find the file, the tree data file name. Let's connect the two, and then we'll load it directly from that file. And here's what that looks like. And again, because there's no strings as factors specified, every text becomes a factor. And of course, girth, height, volume, none of them are recognized as numbers, so they're automatically converted into factors because they come in as strings originally. So if I don't wanna have them written as factors, uh, I can, of course, make a conversion. I go ahead and I, first of all, specify strings as factors equals to false. I load the data as before, and then I convert each one of the columns individually. And now I have them as numeric when I can do computations on them. So next, let's look at the example where the tree data is three levels deep. It's not a simple two level structure. So in that particular case, we have dim with height and width underneath it, and that's going to cause us some problems when we read it in. So again, if we do that, let's just go run this. I'm loading that three level tree data file. It loads it, but unfortunately it concatenates the height and the volume, or the height and the width uh, from that file. Let's go take a look at it here again together, it sort of mushes these two values together. 
And that clearly is not something that is desirable because it becomes impossible to parse apart and to do any kind of computation with it. So again, bottom line, this only works if you have an XML file or an XML document that has the shallow row column structure. So the XML has to contain a collection of nodes which have the same fields, which contain primitive values, and each row or observation is what you're reading. And if it's not that particular form, and if it's not this kind of structure right here of two levels, XML to data frame does not work. So lastly, let's go take a look at loading this from a URL. Here we have a different type of file with the um, various types of plants. Notice that they're all factors by default, unless I specify strings as factors equal to false. Now they're all characters, but unfortunately it also makes price a character and I can't do computation on it. And unfortunately it makes botanical, which I may want to use as a factor in statistical analysis, also a character, unless I explicitly convert it. So that converts it to a factor and that converts price to a number after stripping off the dollar sign, the prefix there. And there you go. I now have everything as characters instead of factors. I have those columns that I want to be factors as factors, and I have the columns that I can convert to a number be numeric. Now, just one additional note. Once you have read the data with the data frame or from the URL, you can, of course, also do additional parsing. You don't have to treat it as a row column type of XML file. You can also parse it and then treat it as an internal tree and navigate that. So XML to data frame is a very simplistic way of processing XML. And of course, that does not apply to more elaborate structures or more elaborate processing approaches and methods. Thank you.